students in today's lecture we are going to have a brief discussion on history taking in orthopedics we have to start with the patient information we have to ask the name of the patient so as to gain the confidence of the patient so that the patient remains assured that something important is going to be discussed and it also helps in better communication with the examiner then you have to ask about the age of the patient because several orthopedic disorders have a predilection to a particular age group it is also important for the documentation purpose. Several degenerative disorders are common in older age group. High energy trauma usually occur in younger age group. Presentation with congenital anomalies occur at younger age. Some tumors affect young patients, while some have predilection to older patients. Inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing frontalitis manifest at a younger or mid age group. The gender of the patient is equally important because of the documentation purpose as well as several orthopedic disorders have predilection to one gender. The rheumatoid arthritis is more common in females and colorism frontalitis is more common in males. Osteoporosis incidence is higher in females. The metastasis to bone commonly arise from breast cancer in females and prostate cancer in males. You have to ask about the residence of the patient because some disorders are prevalent in a particular location. The hip osteoarthritis is more common in Western countries than in Asian. In Asian, the knee osteoarthritis is more common important because low socioeconomic status corresponds to a poor hygiene, poor access to good nutrition, overcrowding, lower immunity, and thus carries the risk of developing nutritional disorders as well as the infectious diseases. The occupation is equally important because occupational hazards are well known. The patients who are involved in heavy drill machinery services are at risk of developing high energy trauma due to machinery and also at the risk of chronic ligamentous injury because of constant stress on their joint and ligaments. Those involved in radiation exposure carry the risk of neoplasms in future. How you start with a patient description? Example 1. My patient Ramesh Kumar is a 36 year old male resident of New Delhi, labor worker by occupation belonging to a low socioeconomic status. Another example, my patient Ayan is a three-year-old male born and living in New Delhi, attended by his parents belonging to an upper socioeconomic status. You can use any standard chart for calculating the socioeconomic status. The one shown on the right side is one of the standard charts and can be used. Then coming to the chief complaints. You have to focus on the current concerns of the patient that made them visit the hospital. Otherwise, there are a long list of concerns of the patient. Also, enumerate only those symptoms which are still present. You have to specify those in chronological order and no details or characteristics of the symptoms need to be specified at this point. For example, the chief complaints, pain right hip for past six months and limp for past one month. Here, if patient has on and off fever, that can be added in details as associated symptoms when you describe the history of chief complaints. If patient has persistent fever at the time of presentation, then it can be added at chief complaint also. Another example, deformity right foot since birth, difficulty in walking since the child started walking. Here is a list of common chief complaints in orthopedics pain, swelling, deformity, limp, limp is abnormal way of walking, difficulty in movement, and fever. Then coming to the description of chief complaints. Most of the signs the patient have pre-existing illnesses. Those can be explained in past history. However, if the patient's illnesses are chronic ones and are still affecting the patient, then you can start with patient is a known case of and in description of chief complaints, you have to tell when was the patient apparently well and what are the characteristics of the chief complaint, that is the symptom you are going to describe, intensity of the symptom, onset of symptom, any triggering event, and how did it progress, the time frame of progression, and how it was earlier, and how it is now, the aggravating factor, the relieving factors, diurnal variation, and seasonal variation, and current impact on daily activities, especially the toilet activities. And then you can tell about the associated symptoms. The negative history is equally important. 
because it helps in formulation of the diagnosis from the history. Remember these points whenever asking for negative history. You have to rule out trauma, you have to rule out infection, tumor, degeneration, and systemic illnesses, which includes inflammatory disorders as well, and congenital or hereditary illnesses. On the right side, you can see the example of how a negative history can be written or told to the examiner. There's no history of trauma, no history of fever or rash. There's no history of any swelling or prominence in other body region. There's no history of other joint symptoms and there are no respiratory complaints. Respiratory complaints because asthmatics are on steroids. They can have joint problems because of the complication of steroids. And also those with difficulty in breathing can have rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis because chest expansion is limited in these patients at a later stage. Then no history of bladder bowel symptoms. Here you have to rule out the UTI, inflammatory bowel disorders like ulcerative colitis, which are actually autoimmune disorders and can have symptoms in joints as well. Then there's no history of any similar complaints since birth. You can specify any developmental anomaly for the pediatric patients. Another example, patient is a known case of gastrointestinal tuberculosis undergoing treatment from DOT center for past three months. The patient was apparently well three months back when he experienced pain in right hip region, which was dull aching in nature, mild to moderate in intensity, insidious in onset, and gradually progressing over past three months. Earlier patient was able to walk without any limitation, but now because of pain, patient is able to walk only for short distances. The pain is relieved by taking rest and analgesics and aggravated by movements. The pain increases during night and patient often wakes up at midnight because of pain. There is no history of seasonal variation. The patient's daily routine activities have been affected. However, the patient is able to perform toilet activities with little assistance. Along with these symptoms, the patient also complains of difficulty in walking for past two months. The patient experiences limp with swaying of body to one side which of which he is not sure. Earlier the patient was able to walk unaided but gradually the patient required a cane on left side for walking. The limp persisted throughout walking from the first step and has improved after the use of cane on left side. There is also history of evening rise of temperature which is not documented. The patient also complains of night cries. There is history of loss of appetite, there is no history of trauma, there is no history of any discharging wound from any body region, there is no history of any swelling or prominence in any body region, there is no history of rash, there is no history of bladder ball symptoms and there is no history of respiratory or other joint symptoms. So based on this history we are guiding our diagnosis to be based on infective etiology. So most likely the patient was having tuberculosis of GIT and the focus gradually transmitted to the hip joint that is right hip joint and patient might have developed the infection of right hip joint which resulted in symptoms. Then coming to the treatment history. Here you need to ask what treatment including self medication have been taken by the patient. If particular medication is taken for a prolonged duration you need to rule out any major adverse effects. For example prolonged NSAIDs can cause gastric disorders as well as renal damage. You have to also document any improvement in symptoms following the treatment, whether it was self-medicated or from the prescription based. An example of treatment history. Prior to hospital visit, the patient had been taking on and off over-the-counter medications for pain relief. The patient has been taking at least one analgesic tablet per day for past one month. However, there is no history of any gastric discomfort flank pain or urinary symptoms. The patient has been started with oral medications and right hip exercises for past one week. There is some relief in symptoms but symptoms are still present. There are no injectable medications being started for the patient and the patient also underwent some blood investigation and radiological tests prior to the initiation of this treatment. Past history. Here you have to add a brief description about related and unrelated disorders of past that were completely treated prior to the onset of current symptoms. For disorders that are still present and are being treated, you have to specify that patient is a known case of who is undergoing treatment 
since the date for the patient and had surgical intervention on dash dash dash. You have to rule out the chronic disorders, especially hypertension, diabetes, thyroid, hypothyroidism, etc. So here is an example. The patient is a known case of diabetes mellitus and hypertension and according to the patient, they are well under control with oral medications. Patient also gives history of chronic back pain for past two years that has on and off frequency and patient seldom required medication for that. No history of any acute or chronic medical or surgical illness is there in the past. Then coming to the substance abuse is important and need to be asked for every patient as a smoking, tobacco and alcohol can have implication of several orthopedic disorders. You have to ask about the diet of the patient and the, whether the female patient has attained menopause or not. Because smokers have poor fracture healing, they are at risk of non-union. The protein-rich diet can precipitate gout attack in at-risk individuals and females have risk of postmenopausal osteoporosis. So it is important. Family history is important to rule out any hereditary association as well as for any infectious diseases that can be transmitted to the musculoskeletal system like tuberculosis. Thank you for your patience. You can mail your queries on this email ID.